Thank you all very much for coming out today. Um, and I'm quite honoured to welcome a very special guest to Pudgy Redfield today, um, performing a song for us, you'll know her from BBC One's The Voice, Georgia Howard. Thank you. them and there's loads of them then no, no it's not as much it's people watching at home. <laughs> yeah it's kind of okay that yeah how do you feel how do you deal with the nerves um i just kind of go into my own little zone really and and just perform it yeah i guess that's the best way to do it i good to admit i'm a little nervous myself so that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um that song that you just performed uh real charles's hallelujah i love her so mm -hmm. um you did that on your first audition on the voice um why did you decide on that song um, I love that song. That's really why I decided to sing it. I wanted to sing a song that I was really comfortable with and I definitely knew back to front. I've sung that song for a long time. Uh, Ray Charles is one of my idols as well. I love him to bits, so I definitely wanted to sing one of his songs. And um, what they do is they ask you to submit about 10 to 15 songs. So I submitted every Ray Charles song I could think of just so that they would give me a Ray Charles song to sing. And then I got, I got that one, which is brilliant. Well, so you certainly knew what the kind of thing you wanted to do then mm -hmm. um, because when uh, when we watched the show I watched it again yesterday to, pre to prepare for this um, you could certainly feel that kind of um, atmosphere in the studio could you feel that as well whilst you were singing it yeah definitely I mean obviously you can't see the coaches because they're turned around yeah. until they turn around but mine didn't turn around until the last minute yeah. <laughs> so last second um, so I was just really feeding off the audience and they were all up out the seats and clapping and dancing and it was brilliant you know to, to see that reaction and then obviously he did turn thankfully yeah, so let's talk about your coach uh, what was it what was it like because obviously as you said Sir Tom Jones or Tom, he didn't turn around until uh, right after you'd finished singing and we were all, you know, we all could obviously see how well you'd done. What was it like when he finally turned around? Um, I didn't really think he had turned, to be honest. I was kind of thinking, okay, the song's coming to an end and this is it, I'm going to have to go back in the room with all the friends and family and be like, oh no, sorry I didn't get through. Um, and then I was over here with the audience and then as I kind of looked at him, realised that he was staring at me and I kind of just went, oh! Okay. I was so shocked. Do you think? Uh, do you think he would have been your first choice if you could have picked any of them? Uh, would would he have been your first choice, or would you maybe maybe pick one of the others? Um, I didn't have anyone in mind at all when I was going through the audition, but I think it definitely would have been Kylie or Tom. Okay. Um, I think Kylie's really fun, and she came across really well. Um, on TV, as you've seen, but Tom, for me, he he likes soul music, and that's what I love. Yeah. So I would have probably. Gone with Tom. I think eventually. you can really see how he suits the kind of uh, the kind of song that you did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's it been like working with Tom? 
Um, it's been amazing. He's kind of like one of those really cool old uncles as he's 73, <laughs> bless him. Um, but he's always on hand for advice yeah. and he's, he's really encouraging. He just wants you to be yourself um, and that's really nice. Okay, so um, how much time have you, have you spent with him since, you, uh, since your first show? Um, you do get to spend quite a lot of time with them. Obviously not giving anything away as to how yeah, far yeah. I've got. <laughs> um, but you know, you do, you do spend a lot of time with them. So there were, there were some pretty formidable opponents on, uh, on Thomas' team as well. Um, were you nervous for your battle, your head-to-head? -head? Yeah, the uh, lady who I was battling against um, is Laverne, who okay. was obviously on my episode as well at the same, ta same week as me. And she, she really put me through my paces. I didn't think I was going to you know, be able to battle against someone like that. But by the end, you know, it, we really did have fun on the stage, so it was great. Well, yeah, it, it, it really, I'm sure you did uh, well. So, um, Obviously, the show's pre-recorded, and I don't expect you to give uh, to give anything away. But how do you feel it went? Um, I feel that we both had fun on the stage. Okay. So it was. I think the song, obviously, I can't give that away, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but the song is very fun as well. So we did really have a good time on on, on the stage and, and a party, really. And the yeah. audience definitely reacted to that. I guess that's what it's all about, really. Um, so the, the show's going to be on this Saturday. You you going to yes. watch it, or are you just going to like? Away from it. I'm actually in London in a hotel room on my own. Oh, <laughs> so right. I know, so I will be watching it um, and tweeting and everything else. So everybody else, please tweet me because I'll be on my own yeah, watching oh. it. Well, I'm sure, um, but yeah. I'm sure our, our audience will watch it as well. Um, so if we talk a bit about your, uh, what you've done in the past, have you worked in music before? Yeah, I've been singing since I was about four okay. years old. So quite a long time. Um, I've done mostly dance music actually. It's something I just went into because it's quite easy to get into. Um, it's not something that I really love to do, dance music, but it's something that I got into and was very easy to pay the bills and it, I had quite a, a good career in dance music. But I just decided, you know, I'd fallen out of love with, with music a little bit because I didn't want to do dance, I wanted to do soul and that's why I decided to go back to my roots. I see. So uh, what was it that made you apply for the voice of other similar kind of shows like The X Factor or Britain's Got oh, Don't say that word in here. <laughs> no, um, the main thing is when you go on The X Factor, people can see you straight away. Yeah. And on the voice, they can't see you. And I think I just wanted to be judged on my voice completely mm -hmm. and nothing else. I mean, obviously, you know, as I know that you're probably going to mention of like the family connections and things. Course, and yeah. I think if I was to go on a the X Factor, they may be like, oh, well, she's that person, so yeah. let's put her through, you know, and I wanted to be judged purely on my voice. Yeah, so as they say, it's all about the voice and you don't, you don't get judged on, like, what you look like or who you are, mm. which I think is really important, especially in the music industry as well, mm -hmm. where when people can do it more independently, yeah. then it's, uh, what, what you sound like is obviously the most important there. So if I can get a bit more serious for a second, uh, win or lose, where do you see yourself after the voice? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, hopefully, I see myself being able to wake up in the morning and do this for a living. Yeah. You know, I love writing music, I love singing music, uh, singing, writing, inspiring others. That's really what I want to do long term. Have you, uh, have you done any of your own music before? Have you ever performed or written anything you've written? Yeah, I've performed a lot of tracks that I've um, written, especially in the dance music scene. I write a lot of dance music um, in the past. I've, I've written loads, but I want to do songs that mean things to me, you know, and I want to do my own style. And so moving forward, that's definitely what I would be doing. Yeah, so um, well, perhaps a signing with a record label, maybe? Yeah, I was signed to a dance record label um, okay. in the past. But again, it's a direction that I want to kind of move away from yeah. um, and, and move more back to the soul and blues. Well, kind of what was it being like to sign to a, to a record label? Um, it was definitely an experience. Um, yeah, record labels are, are great. They're not, you know, they're not the be all and end all. You can do a lot of it yourself. You don't necessarily need a record label to help you out. Um, there's lots of things you can do nowadays to promote yourself. Yeah, um, of course, putting putting music out yourself is something that um, is something that a lot of people are doing right now. Um, what would you say to the people who might want to start doing that, or who might want to look to forge a career in the music industry? I think my advice would be to really know who you are in the industry and to have the whole package. Yeah. You know, if you want to sing 
rock music, then you need to be a rocker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need to have, you need to be the image and everything else. Um, and just make sure that everything matches up so that the audience that's watching it really knows who you are, can really get a good sense of the artist that you are. Because if you don't know who you are, then they won't know who you are. Yeah, so to have the kind of personality that matches the, uh, the genre of music that you want to be in. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of music was it that, um, that inspired you when you were in the girl? Um, well, growing up in from a quite a religious background, we had a lot of gospel music on in the background. Okay. So definitely gospel. Gospel's so creative and fun, and yeah. there's so much energy in that kind of music that I just loved. I mean, Sister Act, which is an oh, old course. movie, yeah. but I grew up loving Sister Act and kind of know all the words to it. Um, but yeah, that kind of music definitely inspired me. Yeah, you can really um, you can really feel the energy in that kind of music. Um, Okay, I think we're going to start with some audience questions now. So, uh, has anybody got anything that they'd uh, like to ask? Don't be afraid. Like, obviously, like, you have, like, different, like, styles and stuff, like, because you like soul music, so you dress up, like, like, the 60s and 70s and stuff like that. Like, where do you get all your clothes from, like? Um... <laughs> That's a great question. My clothes come from generally cheap shops, <laughs> to be honest, because I'm on a budget. Um, no, I think I think you can find clothes anywhere. Charity shops are great for, for clothes like that. I guess, again, being um, part of the voice means it's not all about the image. Yeah, it's about the voice. Um, they have a great styling team as well, so you do get some <laughs> nice free clothes. <laughs> do you spend um, a lot of time in... Um, like, I assume they couldn't tell you what to wear or, like, how to look before you went on the show. Um, the first stage, the blinds, yeah. is definitely all about you. So you pick, I picked my own dress, um, I pick everything, and then the battles is where the stylist team comes in oh, and okay, gives you yeah. your own clothes. I see. Um, okay, audience questions, what have you got to ask? Oh, no, you've heard. <laughs> Have you always wanted to be a singer, or when you were younger, did you have other aspirations, like to be a teacher, or? Um um, well, this might sound a bit daft, but this is actually what I wanted to be. When I was younger, I was obsessed with dressing up as the Virgin Mary. <laughs> so that's kind of what I wanted to be, <laughs> was Mother Mary. I used to always dress up um, with tea towels on my head and things like that, and I kind of wanted to be that. I didn't really realise that wasn't a career, <laughs> and you couldn't actually make money from that. So no, I didn't really have any... I mean, at one time I was kind of maybe a nurse, but... I wanted to be Mother Mary, <laughs> which is a bit sad. Yeah, um, but now I don't. Obviously, I want to be Mother Mary. <laughs> yeah, it's a very niche, uh, niche interest you have there. I yeah. know, um, currently, or you have been working in the call centre. Um, do, you, do, you, do you still do that? Um, I have currently left okay. at the moment, just to take a break, really, just to try and see if I can launch this. You know, off the back of obviously all the publicity and that you get from the Voice. Yeah, um, sure. I love talking, so. <laughs> Working in a call centre is easy for me. Yeah. Um, you have a headset, which is quite cool as well. Uh, <laughs> it's not it's not a great career compared to the, some of them that are out there. But, I mean, it does pay the bills, and I really like helping people. Um, and the call centre that I worked in was customer care, so okay. I was able to do that. Um, and I did enjoy it. Okay, so um, whilst you were there, did people... Um did the people who you were working with knew that you wanted to uh, like apply to The Voice or get into your music career? Yeah, they they have always known that I'm being a singer. Um, they always sing to me as well in between calls and things like that. And there's lots of, of musical banter going on. Um, but they were really being supportive. Yeah, I'm everything. sure you had a lot of people behind you who were really um, pushing you to go on The Voice. Uh, were there a lot of people like that or would you say that it is mainly your own decision? Um, a few people have kind of said you should go on this, you should do this, you should do this. but. To me, you know, I just want to sing, and so whatever is out there that will help me do that, then yeah. that's really what I want to do. Was, um, was The Voice your first big performance, or had you done uh, things, well, not things like that before, but maybe smaller things? Um, I've sung too big a crowd, I think, because in the audience is about 400 people, so it's oh. not actually too big. No, that's not as big as I thought it was. No, it, well, there's millions watching, well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but they don't, um, they make it look bigger with camera angles and everything, yeah, so yeah. it's not actually that big, um, and I've played to a few thousand of people before, so okay. it was kind of not as, as big a crowd as I've played to. I guess as well, if you, um, if you can't see that many people in front of you, it must be kind of reassuring and you might feel more relaxed. 
Yeah, well, you can see them because all the lights are on, but um, they're up out the seats and dancing. Yeah. So it's kind of one big party, really. Yeah, and you, again, we, you get that, um, that big atmosphere that we talked about as well. Yeah. Okay, what else have we got from the audience, guys? Um, <coughs> other than Ray Charles, Charles, who are other inspirations? Um, well, Ray Charles is obviously the top one, but I'd definitely say Etta James, uh, Marvin Gaye, Gladys Knight, uh, Love Whitney Houston, Stevie Wonder. The quite older generation, but I love that kind of music, definitely. Okay, uh, one more question from the audience. Do you think you'll ever work with Adele? <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the elephant in the room. Let's talk about that. Well, um, I would love to do that. I've grown up listening to her music as well. Um, you know, I can do a pretty good harmony on some of her tracks. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be amazing if that ever came about. You can certainly see the, uh, the similarities in the styles between, uh, between the two, what, what you do. Yeah, yeah, we do have quite similar styles. Um, you know, Adele does Adele, and I want to do me. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, it could be some interesting family rivalry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're, we're good friends. Okay, well, uh, I, I think that it, that might be everything. So uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for performing to us. You're welcome. And uh, we'll, I'm sure I will encourage everyone to watch this Saturday, and we'll be, uh, we'll be rooting for you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.